Hello, my name is Nick and welcome to Positive Mental Attitude. Just going to do a very quick video here. Just a little bit of a, an update on something I thought about. Uh, which sort of relates to the last video, the last main video. And it's about the kind of things that you need to do to get yourself through those days in hospital. Um, this one for me, I think again it was quite vital. Um, I was on a ward with, there was four of us, so it was three other people, and I changed a few times where people were getting better and going home and someone else would come in. Um, but it's quite a high dependency ward when you've got a stroke. You can't do things for yourself. So you're constantly needing people to come in and do things. Um, so it's, it's, it's a strange environment. It can be stressful. It can be gleeful at times as well. So... One of the things I found that I had to do to deal with things there was to tweet about it. Anyone who knows me knows um, I tweet a lot about stuff just to get it out of my head. Um, for me, it's like having however many thousand people follow me. It's like having a thousand plus um, psychiatrists listening to you. Get it out, get it done. But also, I know there's a lot of people that were following me who were willing, uh, wanting to know how I was getting on, whether I was improving, how I was feeling, all that kind of thing. So that was an easy way of getting that out to a lot of people without having to text people or WhatsApp them all the time. So I did. I was tweeting constantly how things were going, um, how physio went, what I've been doing, what kind of exercises, um, how good the nurses and the healthcare assistants were, supporting the staff in there, um, and then trying to give people a bit of a, an idea of what was happening. Um, so that did include talking about my fellow inmates in Get Well Prison, as I, I referred to it. Now, it was good to get things out and get it over and done with and explain what happened, like I said to you. Just tell people what's happening. It's not, it's not then on your brain, it goes and you can concentrate more on other things. Um, when I'm talking about the other people, I was very, very aware of the fact that I don't want to mention people by name, even though the chances of anyone who knows them following me is remote. That's not the point. You know, give people the dignity they deserve, but was still wanting to talk about what was happening because it was affecting me directly. So I started giving people code names. Um, and this is why I wanted to talk about this, because I know there will be people who follow me who want to know the origin of at least one of these nicknames. Um, yeah, so if you are going to do something similar, talk about people, but anonymise who it is you're talking about, because it wouldn't be nice if you found out that you've been talking about them. So, we'll start it off with one person who seemed to be um, constantly asking for help and support of the... Um, the healthcare assistants and the nurses. At, at the start, it just, for me, it felt a little bit like it was too much. It was just every single time someone walked past, hello, hello, can you come help me? And things that he didn't really need help with. So I found him quite needy. So, of course, he became Needy Gonzalez, the little Mexican mouse. Um, to be honest with you, by the time I finished and left the, the place, he had stopped asking for help so much and he was doing a lot for himself. And I think I will mention that later on in another video. Um, so I was absolutely delighted to see his improvement anyway. Um, but that's how we started off. Um, I may rename him at some point and then just randomly tweet about him just to make things up to him. Um, secondly, there was someone else in there who was one of the most negative people I'd ever met in my life. Uh, constantly moaning about everything. Obviously it wasn't ideal being in hospital and using the, the use of your, your limbs and not being able to do things for yourself, especially if you are someone who's really used to doing that. Um, and we were all in there. In fact, the majority of people were older than me. I was the youngest one in there by quite some distance. So everyone was used to their own independence or running companies or you know being the main man all of a sudden they couldn't even you know go to the toilet on their own without help 
So I understand people are needy, but he was even worse. Everything was a problem. Um, to be honest, all the moaning, I said he was a bit of a man-child. So he became Nana Cherry. That's so where I'm tweeting about Nana Cherry and Needy Gonzalez. It's two people. It's not me losing my mind. The third one. Um, a fella came in, it was in the, the bed next to me, and he was coughing all night, but he wasn't just like a normal cough. It was a particular style of cough, and it went, <laughs> and that to me sounded like Phil Collins doing the ha-ha-ha bits in Mama by Genesis. So he became Phil Collins, and I used to have entire days where I'd be tweeting about this alternative reality in which Phil Collins was in the bed next to me. Um, I hope he's all right. He was a, a decent fella, actually. Um, so, in fact, I hope they're all all right. They're all decent people. Um, we all started off at a low ebb. And we all had to sort of drag each other up slightly. And I think we all learned how to be a bit more positive. I certainly did. And again, that positivity is going to be the main thing in one of the future videos. But I thought I'd tell you about um, the people I was sharing with and where those nicknames came from.